Taito, Tokyo, Japan, is the smallest of Tokyo's 23 wards in terms of area, but boasts a high population density. Within this ward are Ueno and Asakusa, two bustling commercial areas. The famous Sensoji Temple is also located in Taito. The main character of this story is Kenichi Hosoya, a 43-year-old wealthy man. After his parents passed away, he inherited a vast fortune, allowing him to live a life of luxury without financial worries. His wife, Shiho Hosoya, is 37 years old. The couple has three children, a 10-year-old son, an 8-year-old daughter, and a 4-year-old daughter. The Hosoya family resides in a luxurious apartment in Asakusa, a prime location. Their apartment occupies the 9th and 10th floors of a 10-story building, which they own entirely. The family runs a leather goods business. However, despite their wealth and admiration, a shocking event occurred. The Hosoya family murder case. On March 13, 2013, at 9 Mau AM, the Tokyo police received a distress call. The caller was Kenichi Hosoya, reporting that his four-year-old daughter, Miho, was lying unconscious on the floor and not breathing. Upon receiving the call, the police and emergency services quickly rushed to the scene. Minutes later, they arrived at the Hosoya family's apartment in Asakusa. Entering the top-floor room, they found four-year-old Miho lying motionless on the floor, wearing only a diaper, showing no signs of life. Miho was immediately taken to the nearest hospital for emergency treatment, but unfortunately she was pronounced dead shortly after arrival. At this time, Kenichi, who had called the police, was also present at the hospital with the officers. Surprisingly, he showed no sorrow over his daughter's sudden death, displaying a cold demeanor as if the girl meant nothing to him. This attitude naturally aroused police suspicion. When questioned, Kenichi stated that he had three children, with the eldest son and second daughter staying at a friend's house, while only his wife and youngest daughter lived with him. That morning, around 8 a.m., his youngest daughter woke up and complained of feeling tired. She barely ate any breakfast and then started complaining of stomach pain. Initially, he and his wife didn't pay much attention, thinking she was being fussy. Unexpectedly, she suddenly collapsed, struggling to breathe. Alarmed, the couple searched the house for medicine, but it was too late. Their daughter gradually lost consciousness on the floor. Realizing the severity of the situation, he called the police. Kenichi's statement only heightened the police's suspicions. They doubted Miho's death was accidental. Despite seeming reasonable, Kenichi's account had many holes. Their apartment was in a convenient location, very close to a hospital. If his daughter felt unwell, the first reaction should have been to take her to the hospital immediately, not to search for medicine at home. Moreover, when they found her unconscious, their first choice was to call the police instead of emergency services. This action was hard to explain. Kenichi responded to these doubts by saying that people react differently in sudden emergencies. He claimed he was too panicked to think clearly and could only think of seeking police help, thus calling them. However, this explanation didn't entirely dispel the police's doubts. To uncover the truth, they planned to transfer Miho's body to the coroner for an autopsy. Surprisingly, Kenichi strongly opposed this action, accusing the police of baseless speculation and insisting they let his daughter rest in peace. He demanded the police not interfere with his family any further. Kenichi's attitude was extremely confrontational. Frustrated, the police contacted his wife, Shiho Hosoya, but received the same strong opposition. Despite their suspicions about Miho's death, the police couldn't proceed with an autopsy without the guardian's consent. At this point, the doctor in charge of Miho's emergency care reported something very strange. When Miho arrived at the hospital, she showed no signs of life. After examination, the doctor concluded she had been dead for about three hours before being brought to the hospital. Receiving this crucial information, the police believed that the Hosoya couple was definitely involved in Miho's death. To better understand the situation, let's review the timeline of events. Kenichi called the police at 9.00 a.m., while the doctor concluded that Miho had died around 6.00 a.m. This directly contradicted Kenichi's statement, which claimed that Miho woke up at 8.00 a.m. and then complained of feeling unwell. 
The police found many suspicious points regarding the Hosoya couple, suspecting they were hiding something. Due to the many uncertainties in the case, the police refused to release Miho's body to the family and sent it for a forensic autopsy. The autopsy results revealed that the victim had ethylene glycol in her system. This substance is colorless, odorless, slightly sweet, and can dissolve in water to form an anti-corrosion solution for cars. Ethylene glycol is a deadly poison. Ingesting just a few milliliters can be fatal. Additionally, the forensic examination found olanzapine in the victim's body. This medication, used to treat schizophrenia and bipolar disorder, requires a doctor's prescription. Bruises on the victim's back indicated that she had been lying on the floor for a long time after death. The time of death was determined to be around 6 a.m. on March 13th. Miho was only four years old, and all her food was provided by her parents. Moreover, such a lethal dose of poison would not have been fatal with just one administration. The police suspected that the couple had been poisoning their daughter for some time and called the police with a false story about her sudden illness to evade legal punishment. After obtaining a search warrant, the police conducted a thorough search of the Hosoya family's apartment. Although the apartment was luxurious, it was extremely cluttered, with items strewn everywhere. There was an unpleasant odor in the room. After some searching, the police found several small bottles containing anti-corrosion solution for cars in the refrigerator. However, no psychiatric medications were found in the house. The police immediately questioned the couple. Kenichi claimed he had no idea what those small bottles contained or why they were in his refrigerator. He said his wife handled all the household matters and he was usually too busy with work to pay attention to such things. He and his wife were both healthy, had no mental illnesses, and had never needed prescription medication. He insisted they would never give such substances to their daughter. He suggested that his young daughter might have mistaken the contents of the bottles for beverages and drunk them herself. Kenichi's wife, Shiho Hosoya, remained silent during all police questioning, refusing to disclose anything. This further increased police suspicion. The Hosoya family's refrigerator had two compartments. The upper compartment was the refrigerator, and the lower compartment was the freezer. Miho, being only four years old, was only tall enough to reach the freezer, while the bottles containing the anti-corrosion solution were placed in the refrigerator, completely out of her reach. Moreover, such substances are typically used for cars, raising questions about why they were in the refrigerator. All these signs indicated that someone had intentionally poisoned Miho. However, the couple seemed to have coordinated their stories, and despite police questioning, they refused to admit to harming their daughter. Nevertheless, the evidence the police had was insufficient to prove they were the perpetrators. After the forensic examination was completed, the Hosoya couple retrieved Miho's body, cremated her, and brought her ashes home. Despite this, the police still considered them the prime suspects and vowed to uncover evidence to convict the couple. According to the investigation, Kenichi is a wealthy man. His parents started from nothing, initially running a leather business to earn their first capital. Later, they transitioned to real estate. The apartment Kenichi currently lives in is just one of many properties owned by his family. Besides real estate, the Hosoya family also owns a hotel in Asakusa called Asakusa Ryokan Hotel. Built in 2012, this three-star hotel, known for its unique architecture, is located in a bustling commercial area. From its windows, guests can see the Tokyo Skytree. Asakusa Ryokan Hotel has a prime location and is highly popular among customers. Room rates start at 8,550 yen per night, roughly 60 USD, and the hotel is consistently fully booked. Kenichi is the youngest of three siblings, his parents especially cherished him, hoping he would inherit the family business in the future. As a result, they were very strict in his upbringing. After graduating from college, Kenichi was eager for freedom and adventure. He didn't want to inherit the family business, but instead wanted to start his own venture and build his own career. Acting on his ambitions, he founded a freelance media company specializing in short video production and live streaming sales. Despite his parents' support, his lack of experience led to the company's closure in less than six months. With no other options, Kenichi reluctantly returned home. 
His father arranged a light job for him in the family business, where he only needed to show up daily. This easy life gradually eroded Kenichi's motivation. He began frequenting places of indulgence. Seeing his son degrade, Kenichi's father became furious, leading to a heated argument. Kenichi left home in anger and took a job as a sales clerk at a women's shoe store. Unable to bear seeing her son suffer, Kenichi's mother secretly provided him with financial support and bought him an apartment to ease the burden of rent. In 2007, at the age of 21, Kenichi, through a friend's introduction, went to a bar where he met Shiho, a hostess at the bar. Shiho came from a poor family, and her parents divorced when she was very young. She then lived with her mother. From a young age, Shiho had a hot temper and often lashed out, leading her mother to believe she was paranoid. In high school, she was obsessed with a male idol singer. To afford all his albums, she didn't hesitate to threaten her mother by cutting her hair. After graduating from high school, Shiho left home without telling anyone, moving to Tokyo to start a new life. With no special skills, Shiho quickly spent all her money and ended up wandering the streets. Fortunately, she met a kind employer who took her in. However, after moving in with him, Shiho began to indulge in a life of debauchery. She was very particular about food and drink, and always demanded her employer buy her beautiful clothes. Eventually, the employer's family grew tired of her and kicked her out. Afterward, she started working at a bar, becoming a hostess. The first time Kenichi met Shiho, he was immediately captivated by her. Although Shiho wasn't exceptionally beautiful, her gentle demeanor and humorous way of speaking quickly won Kenichi's heart. From that point on, Kenichi visited the bar every day to see Shiho, spending extravagantly to boost her sales. Gradually, they developed feelings for each other and became a couple. Their relationship faced fierce opposition from Kenichi's parents, who had already chosen a suitable daughter-in-law for him. When Kenichi brought Shiho home once, his parents outright kicked them out, saying that if he didn't break up with Shiho, he shouldn't step foot in the house again. They would never accept a bar hostess as their daughter-in-law. However, Kenichi defied his parents, took Shiho to the apartment his mother had bought for him, and secretly registered their marriage, becoming legally wed. Shortly afterward, Shiho became pregnant. Despite their anger upon hearing the news, Kenichi's parents had no choice but to accept her as their daughter-in-law. In 2016, the couple moved into a luxurious penthouse apartment in the Hosoya family's building in Asakusa. After getting married, Shiho left her old job and started living a life of luxury. Both Kenichi and Shiho were very lazy and disliked doing housework. Their indulgent lifestyle led to significant weight gain, with Kenichi's weight reaching up to 100 kilos at times. In the Hosoya family, Kenichi's older sister had married and moved out. His parents were elderly and in poor health. The couple's lavish lifestyle was largely supported by the second daughter of the family, Mina Hosoya. Mina was an intelligent and dynamic woman who helped her parents manage the family business and also served as the financial manager for Asakusa Ryokan Hotel. She was well-versed in all the family's business operations and lived with her parents in the lower floors of their upscale apartment. On the contrary, Kenichi showed no interest in the family's business. He only cared about enjoying life, spending extravagantly, with each meal costing tens of thousands of yen. In his parents' eyes, Mina was far more diligent and capable than their son. Unfortunately, in April 2018, Mina died in an accident at the age of 41. Before her death, she experienced vomiting, diarrhea, and difficulty breathing at home. Shortly after being taken to the hospital, she passed away. The doctors concluded the cause of death was sepsis. However, as we will later find out, this was far from the truth. The strange events didn't stop there. Two months after Mina's death, Kenichi's father also passed away. It was known that his mother had died in January of the same year. At that time, no one suspected anything about these deaths, as everyone believed they had died from overwork leading to strokes. After his sister and parents' deaths, Kenichi became the sole heir to the family's vast fortune. Following the incident with Kenichi's youngest daughter, during the investigation of past cases, the police discovered that Mina's symptoms before her death were eerily similar to those of Kenichi's youngest daughter, 
a coincidence too significant to ignore. Therefore, they reached out to Mina's best friend, hoping to find clues. Mina's friend described her as a perfectionist, always strict with herself and striving for perfection in everything she did. After graduating from college, Mina had apprenticed under her father in the family business. She was intelligent, skillful, and an excellent communicator, often earning her father's praise. In contrast, her brother Kenichi was lackluster, drifting aimlessly, and failed to do anything worthwhile, marrying a bar hostess much to their parents' embarrassment. Mina never thought highly of her brother, believing he lacked the capability to take over the family business. She also despised her sister-in-law, Shiho, seeing her as a freeloader who only wanted to enjoy the family's wealth. Mina's friend further revealed that Mina had been very worried since Kenichi's marriage. She feared that if their father entrusted all the family assets to Kenichi, he and Shiho would squander the wealth, leaving nothing behind. Mina had fiercely argued with Shiho, accusing her of corrupting her brother and being an unfit wife. Having worked in a bar for a long time, Shiho was adept at reading people and ingratiating herself. The police speculated that Shiho married Kenichi to exploit his wealth. Having come from a life of poverty to one of luxury, Shiho likely encouraged her husband to vie for more of the family fortune. To achieve this, the biggest obstacle was Mina, Kenichi's sister. Thus, the couple plotted to eliminate Mina. Although the police had their suspicions, Mina had been dead for five years, and no forensic autopsy was performed at that time. Finding additional clues seemed impossible. However, the police did not give up and sought out the doctor who treated Mina to learn more about the situation. Surprisingly, the doctor revealed a shocking truth. After Mina was brought to the hospital, Kenichi's father secretly met with the doctor. He insisted that the doctor do everything possible to save Mina, but not disclose her true condition to anyone. He then handed the doctor a large sum of money and pleaded with him to keep it a secret. After repeated pleas, the doctor agreed to help. In reality, when Mina arrived at the hospital, her body was very weak, showing signs of poisoning. Despite emergency treatment, Mina did not survive. After her death, Kenichi's father was very distressed but still demanded that the doctor tell everyone Mina died of sepsis. The police were baffled as to why a father would want to hide the true cause of his daughter's death. Could Mina have been killed by her own father? However, since those involved were now deceased, the truth seemed impossible to uncover. The investigators then went to the Asakusa Ryokan Hotel, where Mina had worked to learn more about her relationships with her parents. An employee said that Mina was highly valued by her parents, managing all major and minor affairs at the hotel. After Mina's death, the entire hotel staff was deeply saddened. Mina was a good boss, caring for her employees like family. The employee also mentioned that Mina had a very good relationship with her parents, often seen chatting happily with them. Since the deaths of his wife and daughter, Kenichi's father had been perpetually sad and rarely visited the hotel. He passed away not long after, which left everyone heartbroken. After Kenichi took over the hotel, he mismanaged it due to his lack of skills, rarely visiting the hotel, sometimes not showing up for a whole month. Later, Due to the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, the hotel's financial situation worsened, even leading to unpaid employee wages, causing discontent among the staff. Many employees were unhappy with Kenichi's management style. There were also rumors that he embezzled funds, preventing the hotel from purchasing necessary supplies, which led to customer complaints that Kenichi ignored. After investigating, the police concluded that Mina's father had no reason to kill his daughter. Perhaps the truth was more complicated. While the police were investigating, they received an anonymous tip-off. The letter claimed that Shiho was mentally unstable, frequently yelling and cursing at home like a madwoman. It also recounted an incident in March 2019. On that day, for unknown reasons, Shiho had a big argument with her husband at home. She then took an extreme action, pouring gasoline on the balcony and setting the curtains on fire. Fortunately, the neighbors noticed in time and called the fire department. If not, the consequences could have been disastrous. This incident prompted a police investigation due to the significant fire damage to the balcony, but since no major harm was done, 
the police did not pursue it further. From this incident, it was evident that Shiho was a very selfish woman, acting impulsively without considering the consequences. When Shiho set fire to the balcony, her husband and three children were still inside. If the fire had spread, the entire family would have been in danger. The anonymous letter also revealed that Shiho hated her youngest daughter. Whenever Miho did something to upset her, Shiho would vent her anger on the child. Shiho even cursed Miho in front of others, saying, You're a worthless burden. The sooner you disappear, the better. Moreover, Shiho sent Miho to live with her grandmother as soon as she was born, only bringing her back home when she was a bit older. Shiho was a lazy woman who never took care of her children, so the Hosoya children were always disheveled and dirty. In September 2022, someone reported that Shiho frequently beat her children at home. Upon receiving the report, Shiho quickly contacted her father, who lived in Hokkaido, to take the three children away. When the police arrived to investigate, the guardianship of the children had already been transferred to their grandfather. After the public outcry subsided, the children were returned to their parents. However, Kanichi and Shiho showed no remorse. Instead, they treated Miho even worse, blaming her for everything. The police visited Miho's preschool to gather more information. The teachers described Miho as a pitiful child who lacked parental love and often had injuries on her body. The school had repeatedly contacted Miho's parents, urging them to fulfill their responsibilities, but it seemed they did not care. Miho's spirit at school was very poor. She was not lively and cheerful like other children. Miho always looked dazed, as if she was chronically sleep-deprived. Her personal hygiene was also very poor. She often wore the same clothes for weeks, always emitting an unpleasant odor. Neighbors around Kanichi's house had many complaints. They frequently heard children crying from the house and sometimes even shouting in the middle of the night. The noise from Kanichi's house seriously affected the lives of the neighbors. Some had contacted local authorities for intervention, but to no avail. Six months later, the police conducted another search of Kanichi's house. It was the height of summer, the weather was sweltering, and the house was a chaotic mess, reeking of a sour stench. When asked where Miho's ashes were kept, both parents pointed to the balcony. The balcony was cluttered with cardboard boxes. It took the police half an hour to find a white urn hidden in a small wooden cabinet buried under the mess. The cabinet also contained photographs of Kanichi's parents and sister Mina. It seemed Kanichi and Shiho had no regard for their daughter, showing no affection for her. The police seized Kanichi and Shiho's computers and phones. Upon analysis, technicians made an important discovery. Shiho's computer had records of large purchases of anti-corrosion solution and olanzapine. Since olanzapine is a prescription drug, Shiho had bought it from illegal websites. When asked about these purchases, Kanichi claimed ignorance. He said his wife often bought weight loss pills and diabetes medication online, but he had never seen a drug called olanzapine. Reviewing the couple's chat history, the police discovered that they despised their youngest daughter, because she wasn't cute or lovable. In their conversations, Shiho said her eldest son was very smart, her second daughter was very beautiful, but the youngest daughter was ugly, dull, and always crying, which was very annoying. She wished Miho would disappear from the world forever. Kenichi expressed agreement with his wife. Reading these conversations, the police were horrified. It was unimaginable that parents could hate their children and beat them so brutally. Despite the couple's clear expressions of hatred for their youngest daughter, they did not mention a plan to kill her. Therefore, the police still needed more evidence. Perhaps realizing they were under police surveillance, Kanichi hired a high-profile lawyer. The lawyer held a press conference declaring that Kanichi was a kind and gentle man who loved his children dearly and could not have committed such cruel acts. The police suspected that Kanichi's move was an attempt to shift all the blame onto Shiho so he could evade responsibility when the truth came out. Despite their denials, Kanichi and Shiho remained the prime suspects based on the evidence the police had. Eleven months after the incident, on February 14, 2024, Valentine's Day, Kenichi and Shiho were officially arrested. When they were brought to the police station, Shiho, who had always been silent during questioning, suddenly put on a dramatic show. 
She refused to get out of the car, claiming she had a headache, then a backache, and that she was too weak to walk. It took the police 30 minutes of gentle persuasion before Shiho reluctantly agreed to get out. Several officers had to wrap her in a blanket, then carry her into a wheelchair, struggling to get her into the police station. After the couple was arrested, a man claiming to be Kenichi's close friend, named A, reached out to the police. He said that Kenichi had his own hardships. Their marriage was not as happy as it appeared on the surface. Shiho was a domineering woman who constantly pressured and mentally controlled her husband. After they got married, Shiho frequently stayed out overnight, neglected housework, and did not take the children to and from school, leaving Kenichi to care for their three children. If anything displeased her, Shiho would throw a tantrum, demanding that Kenichi follow her every command. Shiho loved going to hot springs and always insisted that Kenichi accompany her. Kenichi had to prepare clean underwear according to her specifications. On one occasion, he packed the wrong color, which made her furious, leading to verbal abuse and severe physical punishment. A believed Shiho had psychological issues. She was always anxious about her appearance but blamed Kenichi, claiming it was all because she bore his children. In reality, Kenichi had long been fed up with his wife's erratic behavior and had considered divorce. However, whenever he brought it up, Shiho would fly into a rage. She often threatened to kill herself, putting immense pressure on Kenichi, forcing him to back down. In the end, nothing changed. Asakusa Ryokan Hotel is quite a well-known local establishment. The case involving the hotel owner attracted significant public attention and speculation. As of now, the case has not yet gone to trial. The two suspects remain in custody for further investigation. Facing police questions, they continue to deny the charges and remain silent. What kind of punishment will Kenichi and Shiho face? The truth will soon come to light. This concludes today's crime story. See you in the next video.